Welcome to Horse Fights, your go-to source for keeping up with the show jumping world. The five-star Longines Global Champions Tour took place in Miami this past week, and we saw some great sport out of the four-star Arezzo in Italy. It's been a strong start to the year with more than 20 big five-star winners so far. So we're going to take a look at some of the biggest movers and shakers from the first quarter of the year. And with the Netherlands imposing a stringent new rule, we will break down the details of what you can and cannot do on competition grounds starting this month. But first, let's take a look at who won big at the Globals and across the pond in Europe. The LGCT five-star in Miami saw first-time five-star winner Michael Duffy and Clapton Moosh beat out eight other combinations with the only double-clear round of the day to secure the victory on the sparkling shores of the ocean. And the CSI four-star in Arezzo saw Emma Emanuelson and Cambella Blue PS also jump the only double-clear to take the win in the middle week of the Toscana Tour. And don't forget... Welcome back to Showstopper, powered by Equi Ratings. The first quarter of 2024 is over, and we thought we'd give you a rundown of what's been happening overall in the sport as we head into the lead-up to the Olympic Games. We've already seen 19 CSI five-star events since the start of the year, with over 23 Grand Prix and World Cup classes. A total of three riders have already won two each, Daniel Coyle, Julian Epeyard, and Willem Grava. Two of those on the same horses, Legacy with Coyle and Highway TN with Grava. Four Irish wins and four French wins, perhaps two of the strongest teams going into the games come July. Interesting to note, there have been no U.S. or Great Britain wins so far in any of the top-level Grand Prix. Some of the most important ELO movers within the top 100, that's horses with an ELO of over 722, include Eurekas van de Kattenvenen and Harry Smolders, up 32 points with the biggest boost coming from Den Bosch and Ocala and one of only six double clears in the LLN from the event in Ocala. Clearly an important part of the Dutch squad in the coming months alongside Highway and Grava. R.R. Cambella and Shane Sweetnam. Although he might be thinking James Conn Cruz for the Olympics, Cambella's been on fire moving up 29 points, was on the winning Nations Cup team at both WEF and the LLN, and is one of the top 10 highest rated 10-year-olds in the world currently. Coolio 42 and Marcus Enning, also up 29 points, and it's a relatively new pairing as they've only been together for six months. Already won the World Cup in Madrid and on the podium in an LGCT Grand Prix. Certainly a strong one for Germany. It's been a strong start to the season, and with the World Cup finals coming up shortly, the excitement is bound to keep building. And if you're in a place with abundant sunshine and your footing is getting a bit dry, check out a fantastic product I recently started using to help keep moisture levels high and dust down. Horse Bites, brought to you by Woe Dust. Arena footing is a huge topic on most equestrians' minds. Is it too hard, too soft, too tight, too loose, too dry, too wet? You always hear the same discussions over and over. But no matter what climate you live in, a well-groomed and even surface is paramount for our furry friends to perform at their best. I recently tried a new product called Woe Dust and literally saw noticeable differences. It's super effective, economical, and safe arena dust control. Treatments can last up to 16 months. Most arenas cost under 500 bucks and it's 100% biodegradable. Woe Dust is a polymer that controls the dust in your arena by simply coating the dust particles to make them heavier and pull them down to the ground while also creating this web-like structure to hold water particles together between the grains of sand. It will reduce the need to water your arena by a minimum of 50% and many clients report up to a 75% reduction. I can say I'm already using less water than before. Woe Dust works with most footing additives can be used inside and outside, and is not washed out or diluted by rain. In fact, rain rejuvenates woe dust. All I know is that it worked so well, I plan to use it again in a new lunging pen I'm putting in in Europe. Follow the link below to order yours today and start enjoying a dust-free arena instantly. This week on Weekly Wonder, we're talking about the recent ban on bandages that came into effect April 1st in the Netherlands. What does this actually mean, and is it something we will see proliferate throughout the sport in coming months and years? First off, as of last Monday, the use of bandages on horses during dressage, show jumping, and driving competitions on the showgrounds is no longer permitted. 
The rule is already in effect for cross-country and vaulting. The KNHS claims that scientific evidence is always the basis for a rule change of this type, and there have been plenty of studies done on this subject in recent years. In this particular case, the studies mostly pertain to heat accumulation within the tendon core, leading to long-term damage of the internal structures. Plus, the studies show that bandages may not even be that useful in terms of protection. So that brings us to the basics. Why bandages in the first place? One, protection. Two, support. And three, aesthetics. Basically, people like how four matching polos look. But for the KNHS, they claim that it's very clear from the research that we should stop using them and that we should never place aesthetics above risk, especially since there are useful alternatives. There are always pros and cons to consider when discussing a change like this, but the biggest con is clearly the temperature of the legs rising high under bandages, which has a detrimental effect on the elasticity of tendon tissue. It is sometimes compared to boiling an egg. The structure of the tendon fibers changes, which can damage them. It doesn't help if you cool your legs immediately after riding either, because that's like first setting your house on fire and then putting it out, the damage has already been done. Main things to note, legs get extra hot under bandages, clear. Cell damage begins at 40 degrees Celsius and cell death at over 42.4. And the study showed tendon cores rose above 45 degrees with bandages on. Cooling of leg tendons occurs via air circulation and anything covering the leg clearly impedes that circulation. In terms of support, veterinarians claim that you can only truly stabilize a joint with a brace or plaster, but you obviously can't do sport without locomotive range of motion. So if you want protection, tendon boots work better than a piece of cloth. And if bandages are not applied correctly, they can become loose, a horse can become entangled in them, or if they are too tight, the material is, and the material is not good, pressure can occur and the tendons will suffer even greater trauma. Lastly, bandages have long been thought to help limit range of motion to prevent overstretching of the tendons. However, the studies performed basically found that any kind of bandages both have no effect on preventing overstretching, nor did they limit range of motion. So major takeaways are this. Bandages of any kind, including standing bandages in the stables after competition, are no longer allowed on Dutch showgrounds at national events. The rule was made primarily because of an excessive increase in internal heat of the tendon core, but also because scientifically proven wraps don't significantly reduce tendon strain during exercise or protect against potential impact. To sum it up, the rule was implemented mainly for horse welfare, both to mitigate risks caused to the horses from undereducated caretakers and optically for the larger community. And it seems imminent that rules like this will spread to other nations. We are already seeing a trickle down to the sport with no less than three horses in last week's five-star Grand Prix competing without any leg protection whatsoever. Now, let's take a look at some folks who could certainly use a little support with our wild things from the past week. All right, we're going to do a little countdown of the top five things from WEF this season. Number five on the countdown. Whoa, that's a big splash. Look at that again. Whoa, that didn't look like it worked out and a huge splash. Number four on the countdown. Wow, look, the plank blows down and the horse jumps it anyway. You can see it again. Brave horse to jump that. And here, number three. Oh, that looked a little far away. You can see. Oh, little too far. Number two on the countdown. Oh, looking like he was going for the long one. And then pop chips right at the end. And our number one on the countdown. Look at that face. Oh, he's ready, he's ready. Oh, sneak attack. Look at that. And those were our wildest things of the season. Oh man, look at that champagne spray. If these bloopers made you chuckle, be sure to hit the subscribe buttons for more. And if you have one you'd like to share, please send it along and get an opportunity to be featured on the show. That's a wrap on this week's top highlights. Stay tuned to all of our socials. Like, comment, subscribe, and follow along all the action as it unfolds here on Horse Bites, your go-to source for keeping up with the show jumping world. 